This is what we hope for because this was a dangerous mission. This was people who risked their lives to go in and help these animals. So this animal really suffered not only lack of food and the medicine and water and the human care, but also the military conflict have a huge, a huge impact on them and all of them were nearly traumatized from this war. There were approximately 300 animals that were abandoned at the zoo and that died in their cages, either from the, the military action or just from no feeding, uh, no, no water, uh, no food. It was a bombing environment and, you know, we were thankful that the locals were actually feeding them. Some of the army, uh, the military were feeding them uh, their own food and that's what kept them alive. We have to deal on both sides of between the rebels which were fighting at this time from snipers on both sides. We have to deal with different rebel group and if any big convoy moving, immediately they will think we are transporting weapon or smuggling a human and they will shoot us. We have to deal if there is airstrike, if the Russian will pump this convoy. We were aware that the animal make big noise, but the animal for luck were very cooperative and very quiet during the transport. And when the first nine animals arrived to, to the Turkish border, we were very glad that the Turkish authority opened the border. And the Syrian side opened the border. Incredibly, how all these people come together, different authority come together. And they were very proud to be part of the exchange of animals from one truck to the other. Even the Syrian team were very happy to hand over the animal because for them it's a mission to bring the animal outside this war zone. By arrival of the first nine animal, it was clear, or our plan in fact, we have a long trip, which is initial another 24 hours to transport the animal from Kiles or Chopan Bay border in Turkey side till Karach Bay in north of Turkey. It was very long trip, very, I will say stressful trip for the animal, but because in Turkey we have the competent team of expert wild animal doctors, uh, we were able to manage and to care for the animal during this long trip uh, till we arrived to Karachi Bay to the rescue center in Turkey. So we arrived here last night and after um we gave the animals uh, the first aid and a little bit rest overnight and food and water. We start today with the vet checks. anti sedan, six milliliter anti sedan. Yeah. Yes, with me. Come on. Yeah. Juno? Yeah. We're ready to close the cage. Okay. So the schmunt mund up. He can breathe. He had a heart arrest. Anything can happen. I was thinking we lost him. Not over. We will, we will fight. <laughs> can we, can we, can we were there in the rescue station in Karachi Bay over three weeks waiting to prepare all the permits, all the medical examination and need the treatment for animal to be transported. And on 10 of August, we were able to move all the animal to Amman and from Amman to El Ma'wa, uh, the sanctuary for these animals. The 
animal went to a place in Jordan. It is a paradise. It's called El Ma'wa, which means it's like a place for refugee, also but refugee animal. It is a species appropriate place. It's 140 hectare big, a huge place, considered one of the biggest uh, of its kind as wildlife sanctuary in Middle East. Twelve hours after her arrival to Jordan and to her new home, she get Hagar, the Lions Cup. And this was a great news and the miracle for us and for the team that the Lions get his baby uh, in a safe place and in a calm place and no more noises, no more bumps. There is good things happening. After each night there is a morning, after dark there is light. And I do this because it shows each time when we took a life out from this crisis zone or conflict zone or war zone and you see a bear swimming or a tiger swimming and free, I see its value, humanity and kindness. We never give up and we believe in humanity.